all the portable equipment is super overpowered. So I just have a big room here. And there's a vent down on the other side. I'll show you that in a second. This is just a um, network of uh, radiators. Come on, let me out. Oh, I forgot one thing. I need an expansion valve over here, which we'll just be using a one-way valve for. And this is just to uh, prevent equalization. I want up. Is that up? That's not up. Is that up? That's up. There. So now I have an expansion valve. And now I am going to close this off, like so. And I'm going to start this uh, portable air conditioner that is being run off of this uh, transmit node, this power transmitter node. Uh, now I might want to wait till nighttime because th then it'll be easier to uh, to cool the base off. So. Uh, let's just wait until nighttime. Just as a side note here, um, this planet would not be able to exist this close to a, a black hole. Like that accretion disk right there, that would be swirling at some percentage of the speed of light. I think it's above 30% the speed of light that that accretion disk would be moving. And it looks like this planet is pretty close to that accretion disk. I'm uh, pretty sure it would be torn apart by tidal forces. Which, fair enough, that might be what it's doing in the game. That might be what the lore is, and why this planet is all full of uh, cracks and lava and stuff, but it wouldn't be this stable. It would, it would be gone. It would also be traveling around the uh, black hole at tremendous speed. Okay, that's probably about as low as it's gonna go. So let's uh, let's now start this process. Uh, yeah, it's nice and low. We'll seal the base up. We'll also make sure that there's no holes anywhere. I'm pretty sure I got them all, but you never know with me. Okay, so now the pipe will become fairly hot, but the room should cool down. And there you go. It's cooling down fairly effectively. And even over here, where uh, gas is coming out of here, it's still pretty low. And that's thanks to this um, uh, this valve here, this one-way check valve. Because it doesn't allow the air to communicate all the way through, so it's forcing the air out this way. So your, your pressure builds up high here. And there is actually a hole, and it's still cooling down. That's how overpowered that is. And it's driving off some of the heat out out there. Now, it also could be that this uh, portable air conditioner is super efficient. That actually might be probable. And uh, that's why it's coming down so quickly. Or it could be that it was just cooler outside at that moment. No, I think it's still dropping. Yep, it's still dropping. Now, if I wanted to be, like, uh, super okay with this... Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Just a minute. There. Now we're just uh, transferring the heat around super efficiently, although that seemed to have the negative effect. Now this side is pretty cold, and this side is getting a little warmer. Oh no, oh this, oh, I was pointing at the pipe network. Eh. But that's it. That's, it's, it's obnoxiously efficient. I tried to do a two loop system where one uh, portable air conditioner would be running off another portable air conditioner, just sort of creating a uh, uh, two different zones. But that didn't that didn't work. That was stupid of me. This seems to work fine, and just as long as this valve is here, 
everything is fine. We start sneaking in some gas. And even though I'm sucking air from outside and shoving it in here, it's the temperature is still going down. Like, I could probably add in um, a lot of atmosphere, and, and this little thing will just be continuing to chug away using almost no power. This battery's at like 74% now, but once you get down to a um, like a good level, you can turn it off, or you can um, put an IC onto this, uh, this transmitter to be able to shut the uh, um, shut the AC on and off. There is no... I looked a little bit, but I don't think there is a way to control it. I, could, I can't even get uh, error codes out of it, so um, I think it is just a little compact black box and there's nothing you can do about it. But I mean, turning off the transformer will turn off the uh, the uh, the AC. Now, the wiki says that as soon as you reach like minus 10 degrees, that thing's supposed to shut off. The portable air conditioner is supposed to shut off. It doesn't. Um, I was doing a little bit of testing and I, uh, I got it down to like minus 200 degrees fairly quickly with this thing. Now let's see what we can get it to um, right now. Future me breaking in here because I'm about to come to a realization that this system is, uh, that this uh, air conditioner is rather temperamental. As you can see, it's throwing an error code, and I will figure out in a minute that it's because I have put uh, an air filter in line. Now let's jump ahead again. This solves the error code, but not for long. Jump ahead again. Here I cut in another one-way valve uh, to see how hot the short length of pipe is. By the way, uh, the shorter the pipe and the more uh, heat that you can drive off in a shorter length, um, the more efficient this setup will be. And that is actually how real air conditioners work. If you have a very short length of pipe that is fairly high pressure, a fairly high temperature, and you blow off as much thermal energy as possible, when you get to the expansion valve and then it expands into a much larger area, you can absorb and reject um, a lot more heat. But Let's fast forward again, because even though there's no error code here, there'll be an error code in the future that is really strange. At this point, I start noticing something strange is happening. The filter that is supposed to be taking out the volatiles and the pollutants isn't working. It's outside, it's operating, it's going through the loop, um, but it's not actually taking anything out of the atmosphere. I still don't know why this occurs, but the second part of this strangeness is a little further ahead. Now I've cut in another valve to try to get this, this filter to push out more carbon dioxide and oxygen while removing volatiles and other stuff. Now, the place that I've cut in this valve shouldn't affect the rest of the network, the pipe network, but it does. And I don't notice here, but the air conditioner is already throwing a code. Right there. Now that the portable air conditioner has gotten used to the uh, setup of the network, any changes start freaking it out. You can see here that I tried uh, removing the junctions. Then I tried putting the uh, loop back into place, but I made it one pipe length 
too long and it didn't work. So it's really finicky. This setup is kind of buggy and you're kind of limited maybe with what you can put into the system. And I think you might have to completely uh, destroy the portable air conditioner uh, and maybe even the, uh, the storage stand uh, to, get any, to get a setup to work again. Or it just may be a case of save, exit, reload that will make everything work again. I didn't do it in this play session because it was just one long session. But it works. It works very quickly and it is quite clearly extremely overpowered. So there is a lot of potential there. Oh yeah, and see you later.